And here we are. We're going to continue to work on um, the understanding that the United Methodist Church has on a number of different issues. Right now, we are looking at our doctrinal standards and general rules, articles of religion. Right now, we're going to look at our statement about the sacraments. Sacraments ordained of Christ are not only badges or tokens of Christian people's profession, but rather they are certain signs of grace and God's good will toward us, by which God works invisibly in us, and does not only quicken, but also strengthen and confirm our faith in God. There are two sacraments ordained of Christ our Lord in the gospel, that is to say, baptism and the supper of the Lord. Those five commonly called sacraments, that is to say, confirmation, penance, orders, matrimony, and extreme unction, are not to be counted for sacraments of the gospel, being such as have partly grown out of the corrupt following of the apostles, and partly are states of life allowed in scripture, but yet have not the like nature of baptism and the Lord's Supper because they have not any visible sign or ceremony ordained of God. The sacraments were not ordained of Christ to be gazed upon or to be carried about, but that they should, we should duly use them, and in such only as worthily receive the same, they have a wholesome effect or operation. But those that receive them unworthily purchase for themselves condemnation, as St. Paul states. Our understanding of baptism is this. Baptism is not only a sign of profession and mark of difference whereby Christians are distinguished from others that are not baptized, but it is also a sign of regeneration or of new birth. The baptism of young children is to be retained within the church. Our understanding of the Lord's Supper is as follows. The Supper of the Lord is not only a sign of the love that Christians ought to have among themselves one to another, but rather is a sacrament of our redemption by Christ's death, insomuch that to such as rightly Worthily and with faith receive the sacrament, the bread which we break is a partaking in the body of Christ. And likewise, the cup of blessing is a partaking of the blood of Christ. Transubstantiation, or the change of the substance of bread and wine in the supper of our Lord, cannot be proved by holy writ, but is repugnant to the plain words of Scripture overthroweth the nature of a sacrament, and hath given occasion to many superstitions. The body of Christ is given, taken, and eaten in the supper, only after a heavenly and spiritual manner. And the means whereby the body of Christ is received and eaten in the supper is faith. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper was not by Christ's ordinance reserved, carried about, lifted up, or worshipped. The cup of the Lord is not to be denied to the lay people, for both parts of the Lord's Supper by Christ's ordinance and command ought to be administered to all Christians alike. Of the one oblation of Christ finished upon the Christ, this is what we have to say. The offering of Christ, once made, is that perfected, perfect redemption, propitiation, and satisfaction for all the sins of the whole world, both original and actual. And there is none other satisfaction for sin but that alone. Wherefore the sacrifice of masses in the which it is commonly said that the priest doth offer Christ for the quick and the dead to have remission of pain or guilt is a blasphemous fable and dangerous deceit. So that talks about our sacraments and our beliefs around the sacraments. 
So in the United Methodist Church, we have two sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Um, and we believe when it comes to the Lord's Supper that it is the body and blood of Christ, but it is not transubstantiation. Uh, how it is the body and blood of Christ is how we receive it in faith. Um, and that when it comes to uh, the Lord's Supper, everyone is to be allowed to receive both portions. We'll talk about more of them next time. Take care.